This is Greg here at Cyclopedia, and if you ride dirt bikes, you probably work on dirt bikes to some degree. Maybe you've just been in the top end, maybe you've just been into the clutch, or maybe you've been into the whole entire engine and disassembled it for some, some repair like a crankshaft or a transmission. What we want to go over here is the things we look at as points of inspection as we're disassembling our engine. So you would start at the top end, which is probably one of the most common areas um, people go to. And you may notice on your cylinder head that uh, you notice some pitting from another um, engine failure. This one looks good, something to keep an eye out for. There's also um, inspections for cylinder warp um, if it overheated. Now you wanna check not only just your piston, but your cylinder. And this is a good example, this cylinder had this engine had had a failure it was just honed instead of replated or repaired or replaced and the uh the marks in here were not were not fixed properly so what happened was the uh, the new piston gets put in and immediately receives uh severe damage from the cylinder that was not properly repaired um so that's definitely the shortcut and not the proper way to do it. You wanna fix your cylinder before you put the new piston and rings in there. Um, next, you always wanna to try to clean your power valve when you're doing a top end. The two stroke, the oil and the gas, it can cause a tar buildup. These pieces don't pre perform properly and it's gonna affect the performance of your engine. So, you, you know, it's a lot of parts, it's a little tedious, but with good step-by-step uh, -step instructions, it's not that bad to uh, clean up your power valve. Moving forward, um, the clutch here, you want to check the, uh, the fingers of the basket here. Make sure you don't have grooves worn in there. That'll give you a notchy feeling on your clutch and uh, reduce performance. Same thing with the inner. You're going to check this for the similar wear notches. You should replace that once it gets really bad. A lot of people miss this on the back side of the clutch here. There should be no free play on this. And when they, these bikes get older, you do notice that. You're gonna measure the thickness of your fibers here. If they get too thin or glazed, that's gonna cause your clutch to slip. You're gonna wanna check your metal plates for discoloration and extreme heat or warpage. That'll make your clutch creep. Check for broken springs. Moving on, um, your water pump. Check that, the seals are cheap. Check to see if they're starting to fail. Check your shaft to see if it's got um, pitting or corrosion on it. Um, if, if, if you find that, you should replace it. Sooner or later, you're gonna have a cooling system failure. Over on your rotor, you don't see it a lot, but sometimes check the inside of your rotor. These things can delaminate. Debris can get in there. You can have problems with that. Now, going in deeper, um, crankshafts fail regularly. So. You know, you may not want to put a fresh top on, top end on a really worn out crankshaft because you you know it's going to blow up. You're not going to like your results there. So, if the crank has an extreme amount of hours on it, you know of, throw a new crankshaft in there. Check the uh, the big end side clearance. Check for up and down movement on a used crankshaft. If you're going to do the crankshaft, always do the uh, crank seals and the bearings. And you can inspect your crankcase bearings by just rotating them with a finger, check for roughness or binding. If you feel any, that's when you know you need new bearings. Your transmission, you're gonna wanna look over your transmission real thoroughly. Um, sometimes you need to disassemble it to see everything. This transmission has bent shift forks. Here's the indication of that with the wear. Eventually this thing's gonna pop out of gear um, it's not fully engaging in gear. It's causing damage on the dogs and slots. That is over here. You can also see, I think we might have had a lack of lubrication. We got, a, we got a bushing failure here. That's damaged the inside diameter of the gear where that rides. Um, and then what I mentioned before, that bent shift fork, it's not fully engaging. You're getting extreme wear here. This is gonna start jumping out of gear and the dogs that engage with that, that's gonna cause that failure. Um, you also wanna check the splines for any roughness or binding to make sure the gears move freely on your transmission shaft. So by inspecting all this as you disassemble parts, 
you're going to catch things that you might not by just fixing what you see that's broken. And then when you go to put your engine back together, you'll have a nice tight engine to put back into your bike. And uh, you'll notice that when you go riding.